Between general contractors, scheduling, submittals, product substitutions, the commercial building process can be really confusing at times, especially if you're new to the roofing industry or new to the commercial roofing industry. So today, we're gonna make sense of that whole process. And I've got Doug Markle from the Sheffield Metals uh, Commercial Department, Commercial Project Manager. Thanks for being here, Doug. You bet. So let's start with like the roles of the commercial building process. Who are the different people involved, um, the different companies involved? Tell me a little bit about that. On a commercial project, uh, let's start with an architect is going to either be in the process of designing or have already designed and specified everything for a commercial project. That's then going to be awarded to a general contractor who's obviously going to manage all the different facets of the project. Where we're concerned from Sheffield Metal standpoint is obviously with the general contractor, but also the commercial roofing company that's interested in trying to win that project. You know, looking back at the beginning phase, that architect, that general contractor relationship, um, how are those projects typically awarded? Um, you know, the commercial building owner or whoever is getting their building constructed, now they choose the architect and the architect chooses the general contractor. How does that work? Typically, the, the property owner is going to uh, select an architect to design the project. And then the architect is going to put the project out and the general contractors are going to bid on it. And it'll be awarded to a general contractor. And looking more in depth of that process, uh, you mentioned specify. You know, what's a specification? How does that work? Specification is a uh, very lengthy document uh, that's going to cover basically anything and everything that's going to go into that project from roofing to windows to plumbing, everything on the interior and exterior of the project. That architect is going to specify products or systems that they want to see used on that project. And then the general contractor just follows that specification uh, and Correct. carries that out. More often than not, we see on specifications particular to standing seam metal roofing, where a project might have a certain manufacturer's product specified, but it does allow for substitution consideration for alternative systems. Okay, so the general contractor or the commercial roofing contractor can suggest a different product for use. For sure. Not always going to be accepted, but usually it'll at least be considered ahead of that project being awarded. So after a general contractor is awarded the project and they get to the point where they are hiring the subcontractors to perform the work, uh, you know, how does the bidding phase for the commercial roofer come into play? What does that look like? So the general contractor is going to put the project out on a number of platforms, uh, a lot of different software programs like Construct Connect, Plan Hub, things like that. Commercial roofing contractors have subscriptions to those and they, they get project leads all the time. So they see a project that they're interested in, look at the bid date, look at the plans and specs and scope of work, decide on if that's something that they want to chase. And then they're going to put together a submittal package for the system that they want to put on that roof with all of their pricing, so on and so forth. And then on that specific bid date, they will submit a bid for consideration. So we've talked about some of the major players. We have the architect, we have the general contractor or the GC, we have the commercial roofing contractor. We've talked about some of the major documents. Um, we have the actual plans of the building. We have the specification, which lays out all the product information. We have the submittal, which the roofing company or the, you know, whatever subcontractor submits to the general contractor and the architect about the plans for what they're actually gonna install. Um, you know, what else are we missing here? Is there any other part of that flow that we need to know about? Maybe the only other thing to touch on is going back to the substitution process. If a roofing contractor wants to use a different manufacturer's system than what is listed in the specification, there's a substitution form that they're going to fill out and provide documentation as to why that alternative system should be considered. That usually makes its way all the way back to the architect. And if the architect approves that other system for consideration, then they will put out uh, what's called an addendum to the spec listing that alternative system is also something that could be used on that project. When a commercial contractor makes a bid on a project, 
and that bid is accepted, that dollar amount is the amount that they will get paid? Not necessarily. There could be uh, change orders put in in the middle of a project. They might run into something that was unforeseen looking at plans and specs. And when they actually got out on to the project, there might be a certain condition where changes need to be made. That would be a discussion between the roofing contractor in this case and the GC on figuring that piece out. But yes, uh, they're going to put together a submittal that's going to cover their material costs, their labor, their installation costs, travel, any number of things into that. And once that is submitted, that is kind of the budget for that project, if you will. I see. So how does a manufacturer, a product manufacturer like Sheffield Metals fit into this flow? You know, where where does Sheffield get involved? So Sheffield as a material supplier, specifically the standing seam industry, what a lot of commercial contractors may not know is that Sheffield also has a pretty extensive testing and engineering program on a number of different metal roof panels. And we also have a technical department that will inspect roofs and we issue manufacturers weather type warranties. Those are usually spelled out in the specification for the project. So we know what we're getting into ahead of time. But where Sheffield's interest in this is, is we want to supply metal to commercial contractors who are doing standing seam roofs on commercial projects, and then show them that we can support them with the testing and engineering and performance requirements they're gonna need, and also back them with the manufacturer's weather type warranty that's called out for in the specification. Okay, so we talked about a manufacturer like Sheffield's interest in that um, commercial building process, uh, but what are some of the ways that a Sheffield Metals can support all the different players during that process? So at Sheffield, we have what we call the CAT team, CAT standing for commercial, architectural, and technical team. We can assist commercial contracting partners in all phases of chasing the project. If we're talking about substituting an alternative system, the commercial team, my side of that that CAT team, my team will assist that contractor with the substitution documents, forms, all of the supporting testing information, product cut sheets, sample copies of warranties, anything and everything that they're going to need to submit to that architect to consider. Our architectural department uh, is just that. We are working at the architectural level with architect firms, pushing Sheffield's roofing systems, hoping to get into specification on more and more projects. And then our technical team is there to support with any sort of engineering questions that somebody comes across on a roof plan and in the, the project specs. And then obviously, if we are awarded a project with that commercial contractor, that technical team then works in tandem with the roofing contractor to perform the on-site inspections every step of the way and provide that final weather type warranty inspection and issue that weather type warranty document that they need. So it sounds like, you know, a Sheffield Metals can have a touch point in every part of that process to help. Yeah, absolutely. How does Sheffield Metals make it easy for all the different players in this commercial building process? From an architectural standpoint, we want to be a resource for information. Anytime an architect has a question about standing seam metal roofing, if you stop and think about an architect on a commercial project is thinking about hundreds of things, literally. The standing seam metal roof just being one. If that architect has questions and doesn't have a history of a lot of projects that have standing seam metal roofing, we want to be a, a resource, an educational resource for the architectural community. We also go as far as to offering AIA accredited content and courses through our website where architects can get continuing education credits and learn more about the metal roofing industry. We travel and do on-site lunch and learns at architectural firms where they can get continuing education credits and learn more about the industry. All right, well, thank you very much, Doug. I really appreciate the time. You got it, anytime, Thad. If you have any questions about commercial building projects, please comment down below. We'd love to answer them for you or check out sheffieldmetals.com to get in contact with our commercial architectural and technical team. Subscribe here to the Metal Roofing Channel. As always, I'm Thad Barnett. We'll catch you next time. Thank you.